Hey guys, welcome back to another video on TJ Tech and in today's video we're going to be doing a full PC build tutorial. All the parts that I use will be linked in the description along with links to the specific parts that I used. I hope this video helps you in building your next PC, but without further ado, let's get started. I like to start off with unboxing my motherboard and then setting it up on top of the motherboard box. This gives me a clean surface to work on. CPU time. It is a very easy process. You just line up the triangle in the corner of the CPU with the triangle in the corner of the CPU socket on the motherboard. Next up, we're going to install the RAM, which is just as easy. First, we're going to unbox it. And then we're going to make sure that we install it in dual channel. This means installing in the two slots furthest to the right, one slot apart. This depends on your motherboard brand. But in most cases, it's just as I installed it here. Alrighty, the RAM's in. Next step, we're installing the SSD. Again, this depends on the type of motherboard you're using. But in my case, I have a heat sink that I have to remove first. Once the heat sink is removed, I can go ahead and drop the SSD in and then put the heat sink back on after peeling off the plastic. Incoming satisfying peel. Yeah. Ah, yes. I think it goes this way. Here we go. As soon as you hear it get stiff, just stop. Especially with this, you don't want to tighten it too much. Next up, we're going to be installing the CPU cooler. Now here comes the tricky part. Removing this, I had trouble with this in my last build. First, I have to remove these brackets here because my CPU cooler comes with its own brackets for the AM4 platform. Installation of the CPU cooler depends on the type of cooler you're using and the brand of CPU Oops. cooler you're using. Ah, look at that brush metal. That finish is crazy. But in my case, I just had to plug in a few standoffs and install the brackets on top and then mount the CPU cooler on top. Always follow your instructions just like I am here.
you can put it in both ways if you know what I'm trying to say you can put it in through the back or through the front it doesn't matter oh it's too tight Once you've successfully installed your CPU cooler, you can just go ahead and plug in the CPU fan to the CPU fan header. So what I'm going to do now is uh, take this off first and take off that fan at the bottom and put it on the top. I think it'll help it out with the fan. Next up, once your case is ready, you're gonna have to go ahead and install your IO shield. Your motherboard might have a built-in IO shield. You might have to skip the step and go straight to installing the motherboard. When installing your motherboard onto the case, all you have to do is line it up into the standoffs. Your motherboard should have standoffs installed. Once your motherboard is lined in with the standoffs, just screw them in with the screws that come with the case or the motherboard. Next up, we're gonna be connecting the case to the motherboard. First off, you're gonna make sure you connect your HD audio and then connect your USB and then connect your power and reset switches. After that, you're gonna connect your fans to the motherboard. This again depends on the type of case you're using and the motherboard you're using and the number of fans you have, but I only have three fans. I had to connect all the fans directly to the motherboard. Next up, we're gonna be installing our power supply. I also got myself some cable extensions to make my PC look nicer. Like All you have to do here is mount the power supply into the power supply grommet with the fan facing down so that it pulls in air from the bottom. If you're using a modular power supply, which is a power supply that doesn't have the cables installed already, you can just pl plug in the cable extensions directly into the power supply. But in my case, I have to plug in the power supply cables onto the cable extensions and then connect the extensions directly to the motherboard. Now once you've installed your 8-pin CPU power cable and your 24-pin motherboard power cable, you're gonna have your PCIe power cable laying around because it's time for your GPU.
all you have to do here is place on the latch where you slot in your GPU and then press it in there. You should hear a satisfying click when you do so. And then once you connect your PCIe power cable to the GPU, you're done. Just make sure there are no loose connections and make sure all your connections are secure. Just go through everything one more time. And then after that, you can power on your PC for the first time.